10 two sample uh, hypothesis testing. And is the, is, the, is the angle decent enough? Okay. You might even want to move over the whole camera if that makes it easier. Two, two sample hypothesis testing, but in particular, we're going to focus on a confidence interval. Confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2. This is quite important, and again, I don't know why I always leave it out of my other classes, but we're going to do it now. In fact, in particular, I can maybe a 95% confidence interval. Now, before we start learning about the confidence interval from chapter 10, maybe it's worthwhile reviewing briefly the first time we saw, the only time we saw a confidence interval is in chapter 8. In chapter 8, we had a confidence interval of the type x bar plus or minus t times s over n. But this was a confidence interval for mu, in other words, mu by itself. In other words, if somebody took a, let's, let's take an example from the spinner assignment. Somebody said, my average of my five numbers was 4.8. And I want to be, eight, we've, in fact, you've done this, and some of you, I apologize for not returning the spinner assignments yet, but you want to, I want to be 80, I want to estimate that answer with 80% confidence. So somewhere, so we say, okay, 4.8 plus or minus, you look up the T and the S of the, the standard deviation of the five numbers, the sample size was five. And you might say, you know, 4.8 plus or minus, I think this was 1.53, if I recall, uh, for the spinner assignment, and this was, could be anything, it should be around 2.87, let's say it's 2.97 for 96 for argument's sake. So, and somebody might say that the answer was somewhere, I'm not gonna do the calculation, somewhere between uh, 2.1 to 6.3. Again, this is not the right numbers, but so I'm 80% confident the mu is somewhere between those two numbers. So very often you wanna report not just as a significantly different, in other words, let me point it out to you. The other thing we did in chapter 9 is mu equal 4.5, h1, mu not equal to 4.5. So we had chapter 8 and chapter 9. This is chapter 9. And we had one approach is to do it by hi hypothesis testing. The other approach is to estimate the mu. Both of them are talking about the mu. It's a confidence <laughs> for mu. Is it true? So here you're trying to know is a yes or no answer, but here you want to know a more, in fact, there's more information if it's in between two different numbers. The same thing here. We can try to compare, this is a bad example, but mu1 equal mu2 would be a better example. Uh, are the two, in fact, it's only going to work for that kind of hypothesis testing. So in chapter 10, where we have the hypotheses, are the two groups the same, mu1 equals mu2, or h1, mu1 is not equal to mu2. If it turns out, for example, that you reject the hypothesis, so somebody would want to know, okay, how far apart are the two averages? Are they between minus three to plus four, minus three to minus two? In other words, are they, what's the range of numbers that we have for the, so what we're trying to do is find a 95% confidence interval for mu one minus mu two. Now, under the eight zero, that would be zero difference. All right, so we want to know, what is the actual difference? So of course, the main part of the formula so I'm going to give you a formula now. So the first part of the formula is to actually calculate the difference between the two averages. Like, like, like we've been had, it's not one average, it's a difference of two averages. Plus or minus, it's still going to be a T depending upon how confident you want to be in the degree of freedom. It's still going to be an S, but it's not going to be one S. It's going to be a combination of the two S's. Okay? And the square root of n is this, this bottom, the square root of, you know, the n on the bottom is basically taken into account over here. So this next part of the formula, instead of plugging in the simple s now, divided by the square root of n, we're going to plug in this whole thing underneath the radical sign. So it's really, if you think about it mathematically, it's the same thing as, it's the same thing here, but it's just multiplying this times the t plus or minus the x bar minus whatever. So this is going to basically tell us how far apart the two averages are with some degree of you know, precision. So t times, so basically the next part of the formula is just rewriting that thing we had before. n1 minus 1 s1 squared plus n2 minus 1 s2 squared, whole thing divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2. We didn't need parentheses for that. 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. So formally it's not that different than before, a little more complicated, but that's it. So the only trick, of course, will be everything is just plugging numbers, and the only thing that takes a little bit of creativity is knowing how to look up the T number, but we've done that already a dozen times already in chapter seven, eight, and, well, eight, nine, and 10. 
So let's apply this formula now to one of the examples in the book. So, so let's make believe in this particular case, we want to know what is the difference, what a 95% confidence interval, and by the way, it's again, this is 1%, but this is 95%, uh, for mu1 minus mu2. In other words, how far apart are these two machines? Basically, you know, are the two machines the same? Well, no, we know they're, they're seven apart. 65 minus 72 is seven. So they're seven apart, but a seven is just that particular sample. Are we on, by the way, Brian? Okay, so the question is seven plus or minus, you want to say somewhere between three and 11 or something like that. You want to give it a range of numbers, the same exact thing as chapter eight. So what I'd like you to do right now is basically plug in, what is the X bar one? That's 65. What is the X bar two? It's 72. What is the T, et cetera, et cetera. Now, um, um, so the only, again, the only thing we really have to show you before I let you, you know, let you loose to calculate this is how do you get the T? So let's go through this again. It's the same exact T we did in the other chapter. Because it's a confidence interval, we're always going to split the alpha. We want 95% in the middle over here. 95% is in the middle. That means automatically this is 0, 2, 5, so that tells you which column to look up, which is you know, the blue part of the page, which is the right side of it. And degree of freedom will stay the same throughout the entire chapter 10, n1 plus n2 minus 2, or 100 plus 100 minus 2, or 198. And if you go to this one, it's going to be 1.96. Again, everybody should do it who wants to try it, just because you need to know this at some point. Laura, you want to look it up, or anybody else? If you look up 0 0.025 down to row 198, what do you see there? Well, it's got to be very similar to the Z, even though it's because it's such a high degree of freedom. And what do you get? 1.9600? 0, 0. 0, 0. And because, now, do you have to put in the minus 1.96? No, this is not hypothesis testing. We're not creating rejection and acceptance regions. We're basically just pl plugging in a number over here. So this would be 1.96 right over here. So again, so we'd like you to take a couple of minutes to calculate 65, 72, 100, minus 1, 9 squared, 100 minus 2, blah, blah, blah. Take this number, square root it, multiply it by 1.96, and then add it to minus 7 and then add it, then subtract it from minus seven. So after all is said and done, we're gonna end up with a pair of numbers. One is definitely gonna be a negative number, and the other one might be who knows what. Probably be negative also. After all is said and done, the answer is 9.63 to minus 4.37. So again, what does this mean? It means if I would repeat the same experiment, a um, hundred times, where were you? And each time we're gonna get, be getting a different pair of average. Remember every time, each time a different sample, a different average. We've seen experiences from the spinner assignment in chapter seven, chapter eight, and chapter nine, but we haven't done it for the spinner assignment in chapter 10. I don't, I'm not gonna ask you to do that. But if you repeat this again and again, each time you're getting a different pairs of averages, different numbers there for different averages, each time a different interval. If you would plot these intervals, um, 95 out of 100 of those intervals would cover the true value from mu1 minus mu2. Now, so does that mean, uh, so I'm 95% confident, that's what it means, that somewhere between this number and this number is the true difference. So what does that mean in terms of the true difference? Is the true difference zero? In other words, if, we, if I asked you uh, back, if I asked you to do the hypothesis testing, mu1 equals mu2, in other words, let's assume this, okay, this example with these numbers is really a one tail. Well, make believe the example, they just want to prove that two machines are different. Machine one is the old machine and this is the new machine. And the question is, are the two, the two machines the same or different? What if, if I didn't, go, we, we proved that, you know, that they're different, but what if I didn't have that calculation, I just had this calculation, how could you interpret this calculation to answer the hypothesis testing question? That's the, the last thing I wanna say about this. And since we're running out of tape, I'm gonna have to answer it myself. Um, since this, not, if in fact, mu1 and mu2 were, were basically very similar, what would you expect the difference between them should be? roughly around zero. So is this data claiming that the difference between them is, zero? is that consistent with the, the zero? This is saying I'm pretty sure the difference is not zero because both is minus four to minus nine. Zero is outside the, uh, zero someplace over here. The summary is the following. If the hypothesis, what I'm trying to show is relate, which we haven't done in chapter, we could have done it in chapter nine. Confidence interval chapter eight, hypothesis testing chapter nine. But now let's try to do this in chapter 10 and it's a similar idea. If the hypothesis. Now, what's the, what's the hypothesis? This is equivalent to mu1. The book sometimes does this. Mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero. Just simply, 
This is saying that H1 mu1 minus mu2 is different, meaning it's not zero. So you could express this in terms of 0.1. 